Question from Tom Smith in Antioch, California. And this is from a few weeks ago. Tom writes, I'm just wondering if you had any thoughts about Anheuser Busch InBev's announcement that they're cutting their dividend by 50%. Um, I'm not a, a shareholder of AB InBev, so I I probably saw that headline, but it, it it completely flew by me. You're not even particularly a user of uh, AB InBev. I'm not even remotely a user of <laughs> of AB InBev or any or any similar beer products. Uh, well, yeah, I've got some thoughts, uh, but better than my thoughts are the thoughts of uh, Nate Weissar, uh, who's a colleague at MFAM Funds and follows the stock closely. And uh, yeah, it's not a good sign whenever somebody is cutting the dividend. Why are they doing that in this case? Because they made a miscalculation in racking up the amount of debt they did to make the acquisitions that they have of about $109 billion in net debt. And they've got to pay that off. And there's not sort of an immediate danger. They've got that debt stretched out over more than a decade. But in 2020, they do have a fair amount of it that's rolling over. And so it behooves them to get some of that paid. And by cutting the dividend, they freed up a significant amount of additional cash a year to pay that. But the original program was hey, we've made these acquisitions. It's going to work out. We're going to be able to keep the dividend. We're going to be able to raise the dividend. And we're going to be able to pay off all this debt. And that story has now changed. So I'm reminded first and foremost of General Electric when the dividend when the first dividend cut came earlier this year and what was basically said by everyone was well this is the right move and this may in fact be the right move for AB InBev as well but to your point yeah I almost I almost want to linger when that happens and say wait a minute let's 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 talk about what led to this point, because even if it is the right move and even if it works out in the end, someone really blew the math on this one. Yeah, well, yeah, and they blew it in the sense of trying to grasp where the beer market was going, and people are, to a degree, uh, exiting the beer market or the at least the portion that. Uh, Budweiser, AB and Bev is Anheuser Busch, uh, and so Bud and Bud Light are diminishingly relevant beers. As big as they are, as many Super Bowl ads as they will buy, as much as we all care about Bud Bowl, nevertheless, I was going to say as much as we care this time of year about the iconic Clydesdales. Uh, you know, commercials sure. exactly for the holidays. Who doesn't love those? So I was at an investor uh, conference a couple years back, and uh, the Anheuser Busch. And I know I've spoken about this on the podcast, so I'll try to talk more quickly than I normally do, which listeners will be happy about. Uh, and and so anyway, this guy got up there and he had twenty minutes to you know give the spiel, and mostly what he talked about was. The Budweiser commercials on the Super Bowl, as if this was a company that produces commercials, which incidentally lead to the sale of beer. And wait, this is a Budweiser executive. Yeah, yeah. This at, was like at an investor day, just standing up talking about look how great our ads are. It was, I think, a highly relevant uh, item about hey, do, should you be investing in our company? Well, let me tell you about our our ads on the Super Bowl, and people really loved them. And because, <laughs> well, look, what, why, why else are people drinking Budweiser? They're drinking it because they grew up drinking it or because they are inundated with ads uh, for it. And so it is a highly relevant part of the business, as it is for Corona. Uh, and they've done very well uh, with their ad campaign or had been doing well. And there's beginning to be weakening in Corona and Stella. Even though uh, uh, you know it's it's it, look it's a it's a huge thing. People still drink a lot of beer, but a lot of the incremental beer purchasing is going to higher end microbrews and things like that. And the cut that is left for Budweiser is diminishing. Well, and on top of that, I mean they you know they're cutting their dividend, and on top of that, when you look at the stock, it's down about. Thirty percent year to date. I mean, you and I were talking the other day um, about Jam Smucker, 
Um, and I made the point that that stock is you know basically flat for the last five years, um, which you know compared to. AB InBev, you know that looks phenomenal. That looks like that's tremendous outperformance. Um, and by the way, say what you want about JM Smucker, they have steadily increased their dividend over that five years. So if you're a shareholder, you're not you know you're not getting necessarily the returns, but in terms of an increasing dividend, you, you got to be happy about that. And if you're on the flip side, if you're AB InBev, if you're a shareholder, I mean that's got to be one of the top three reasons you own this stock. Yeah, well, for a lot of uh, institutional accounts that are investing specifically for the dividend and have as a thesis for why they hold the stock, that it is going to be a growing dividend uh, story. And that story is either over or temporarily halted, uh, or uh, some variant of that, enough so that there are a lot of accounts that say, we're no longer going to stick around. And that may well have created an interesting enough entry point that uh, people can get behind. It's trading at the very bottom of its 52-week range. As you say, it's off substantially for the year. And so, I'm not saying that all of this leads to a story that you wouldn't necessarily want to uh, look into today, but it's had negative returns for five years. 